Welcome to my channel Living Linux. This morning I received a package and this is probably the Raja Rock 5B with the acrylic case. So it looks like they used a lot of tape. So uh, See if we can get it off. Hmm. It's just going to be a bit more challenging than I hoped. Uh. So, okay. Okay, so here we have something from Allnet China. Oops. So, I think this looks like the Case. Uh. Okay. Hmm. Not sure if you have to keep this on or not, but at least the uh, Looks like there is acrylic inside it, but there's some cardboard on the sides. Here are all the screws and mounting stuff. And this is a small heatsink with a Pad. And this is the Raja Rock 5 Model B. So okay. This is the back side with an explanation and it also has a URL to get you started it says it says 8k for HDMI the Rockchip RK3588 USB 3.1 and two and a half gigabyte Ethernet Okay, so in this plastic box, um, let's see how that works. Oh, yep. Nope, this is just a card box to keep it firmly in the plastic box. And Here we have the Raja Rock 5B. So here on top, that's the 40 pin GPIO. And I think that this is micro HDMI in input. I think there's two buttons there. Looks like two buttons. So what do we have here on this side? Um, I think that is the oops, three and a half millimeter audio jack. 
USB-C also to power it HDMI, HDMI USB 2.0, 2 times, USB 3.1 probably, 2 times and a 2.5 gigabyte Ethernet and yeah this is the Rockchip RK3588 I think those two are the memory modules I ordered the 16 gigabyte model um, this is M2 slot where you can add something like Wi-Fi card and here on the bottom there's the M2 NVMe and what I read on the forum so far is that you can't boot from NVMe yet and let's see I thought there was supposed to be micro SD somewhere well at least that's the EMMC there and uh, yeah I think I'll, I'll just check out where the uh, micro SD slot is so let's see this probably goes here and well not really sure how that goes with the heatsink but we'll see so I'll try to put things together and I'll come back after that well here I have everything put together so the simple screws they go on the top plate and then you have like these big spacers then the smaller spacer screws um, and then the bigger ones for the bottom plate but one of the things that is interesting is that the, the top plate is thinner than the bottom plate and I'm not really sure why and um, what I would have preferred is actually that the bottom plate would have been just as thin as the top plate and that way they could have just used simple screws also for the bottom plate but because the bottom plate is thicker then I was actually hoping I could use the, the bigger spacer screws in between there because now um, yeah, you're really on top of that M2 slot and that might also give problems when you have like a thick M2 NVMe drive. So perhaps it, there, there is an easy way to get those bigger spacers so that you can put those in between and have some more room for the M2 slot. Um, or like I said, yeah, they could have gone with a thinner bottom plate and then remove those small spacer screws and just have those larger spacer screws there and then just use like simple screws also on this side but it is what it is um, since I don't have a NVMe drive yet it's not a problem yet but uh, I think I'll send an email to Allnet to ask about this situation and also for the micro SD slot that's actually um, right next to the NVMe so here's the NVMe slot so on this side just below the buttons there is the micro SD slot so can just plug it in like this and then you're good to go so I'm going to connect HDMI power 
and uh, let's see if it boots. I'll see you in a second. Well, for a moment I was afraid that I might have a faulty unit because when I connected everything and I connected a cable to the HDMI output port um, my monitor didn't pick up any signal. Um, I did see some LEDs blinking so it was not completely broken was my assumption but well at least for now it turns out that I need to use a um, powered USB-C hub and connect HDMI uh, on the hub so that's what we'll do now we're going to power it on with the hub and then have the HDMI cable connected uh, from the hub and perhaps you can see that there is a LED light here that is telling you if it's alive or not so So I think the default login is rock and rock. So here we go. And we're in. Um, Let's see, well there's chromium. Okay, so let's see, with 5,000 fishes, well there are some glitches in the screen, but um, it's almost hitting uh, 60 frames per second. Well, I guess this is just an early build with the rock chip driver, and that probably means we're on kernel 5.10. Um, yeah, who knows when we get uh, some other distributions running, hopefully mainline. Um, I guess I'll start uh, investigating some more. So this was the unboxing and first boot. And you will definitely see some more videos after this one. That's it for now and I hope to see you again in my next video.